couple guys, Chase, ChaseWins.com, Venture Sports Consulting, back for another video. We're going to talk about Sunday. We're going to do some college basketball action. Now, um, if you want a free play for Sunday NFL action, nice little underdog pick in a game and a, you know, and a team that I think can and very may the very well may win outright, uh, you can check out the link in the description below of this video and the video that I posted yesterday, where technically it's still Saturday, it's Saturday evening, um, but the video that I posted very, very early this morning giving you a Saturday free play, I also gave an NFL premium play. It's on the card, absolutely free. You can check that out. Still plenty of time to play that one. <clears throat> Obviously, like I said, it's just now 6.30 on Saturday night, so we still have plenty of action going on tonight. We had one 6 o'clock game start in football earlier. Um, we've got a 8 p.m. and a 10 p.m. college basketball game. We've got games going at 7 p.m., 7.30, 8 p.m. college football. Um, so the majority of our college football action hasn't even started yet. We've got a pick within the Clemson game. We've got a pick within the Bama game. You know, plenty of action still left today. You won't see this video before then, but what we can recap is the free play that I gave out for Saturday was an underdog pick. TCU saying that I think they would win the game outright. They did so 29 to 22 against Oklahoma State and overrated Oklahoma State at that. And congrats to everyone who followed that pick. I know a lot of people did not. Um, that was a game I knew people weren't going to like. They were going to tell me I'm crazy. They did so. Matter of fact, about 99% of people that responded to me at all involving that pick said that I was insane that TCU was going to get blown out by two plus touchdowns and what do you know who was right again there is no other service in this industry that gives out as many free winners as we do period and the majority of our, our free plays are underdogs and our dogs win outright they don't just cover the spread they win the game outright if you play our underdog picks eight out of every ten of them you can not only Take the points, but you can play the money line and win twice in one game. You will make money following these picks. And if you like them, if you like everything that we give out for free, just imagine what you would get by buying one of our premium memberships, getting our premium plays, our top plays, our games of the week, month, year, our upsets of the week. Think about it. Look at all we give out for free. That's just a taste. That's just the tip of the iceberg. So... Congrats to everybody that was on that play. It was on the premium card. We also laid the points today with Ohio State. They took care of business. I honestly think they could have kept Michigan State from scoring any points. But it was cold in East Lansing. You know, they got tired towards the end. But they took care of business nonetheless. We did take Auburn today, plus six points. I think Auburn should have won that game outright. What I saw in that game was... Through the first half, Auburn was the better team on both sides of the ball, and they were the more hungry team. You know, that, that hungry dog runs faster mentality, they had it. And that's one thing that I've always liked about Gus Malzahn is he is a very – he's not a complacent coach. He will he, – he goes, he goes for the throat for four quarters. That's what makes him as good as he is. That's what's kept him at Auburn – as long as he's been there. And every year you hear about, is this the end of Gus Malzahn? Are they going to part ways? Because Auburn just doesn't meet the standard. But the problem is, guys, winning in the SEC is not easy. Winning in the SEC West is even more difficult. And when you have to go out there and compete against an Alabama every year, but yet you're disappointed you're not winning national championship after national championship, what do you expect? If you can be in that conference and in that division of the conference and have a winning season after winning season, I think the coach deserves to be there until he just cannot win anymore. And I think Gus has done a very good job as coach. But what I saw in the fourth quarter, which is where A&M was most deadly, and what I what Jimbo Fisher is known for is really cranking it up, and he's one of those coaches that is not afraid to make adjustments and make changes, whether they work or don't work, you know, is, is the chance they take. And in the fourth quarter, he made one of, you know, 15 different adjustments leading up to that point. He makes another one, and Auburn's defense is kind of like, eh, they hadn't been successful through most of the game. They won't be again, but they were. And Auburn's offense was finally starting to plateau a little bit. 
So a game that they were not only in most of the time, but were winning for a good portion of the game, they ended up losing, and they lost by, I think it was 11. But I think Auburn was the winner in that game. I think Auburn should have won that game outright, so I stand by that play. But anyway, that's what we can go over now. I think I think Notre Dame is still going on. I think last time I looked, they were up by 35 or something. But anyway... So what we've got going on this Sunday, if you want to get the remainder of football, college football and the NFL, every premium and daily top play that we have, every everything that we have for the rest of college football through the national championship, bowl games, everything, through the rest of NFL, through the Super Bowl, playoffs, all of it, you can get for $2.99. Just send me an email, chase at chasewins.com. Say, hey, I want to jump on it, and I will give you the instructions of how to get it. If you want to jump on a week package, make sure you do so on Sunday because, like I said, you buy a week pass, you get your first upset of the week for free. We had one full, we thought Auburn was going to be a big upset in college football on Saturday. But even though like the people that bought the one week package got that play, if you buy a one week pass this week, you will get the first one for free. No questions asked. After that, that's going to be a play that people can purchase because it'll be on most occasions considered like a top play for the day. So it will be something that most people would purchase separately if they're not already on a membership. So that's what we've got going on. Jump on a package now. You will not be disappointed. And like I told people in my email, we had a couple of people send in emails. I don't remember how many it was saying, hey, you ran Black Friday specials. You had uh, one year all access passes for $1,000, which is 25% of the normal cost of 75% off. You were getting offered a lifetime pass for only two grand, which means you get everything this site offers forever. You never have to pay another dime, which is something that we don't even offer. You can't even go to the site and buy it. A couple of people sent in and said, hey, you know, we, we wanted to buy it. We sent in the request and, and nobody ever got back to us. Well, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm taking them at their word. And I said, listen, for those people, I'll honor those prices through this weekend and I will take you at your word, but you need to get back in touch with me right now. So if you are one of those people and you want those prices, let me know. You can go back and watch the Black Friday video. Any of those were something you were wanting and you didn't get, let me know. I'll honor it through Sunday. Now come Monday, don't say, Oh, yeah, I wanted that because I'm going to say, oh, well, you, you should have, you know, you, you waited way too long. But just throwing that out there. Let's jump on a free play. The big game of the day that I see in college basketball is Villanova taking on Texas in the Big East Big 12 tournament, whatever they're calling it. And when you look at Texas, which is a much improved team, much improved. And you look at Villanova, a team that has been, you know, not only just a few years pulled from a national championship, and they are somebody that, you know, it was funny when they won their national championship, they, they're against North Carolina on that buzzer beater in overtime. I still don't agree with that game, and it's not because I'm a Carolina fan, but they were deserving of winning a national championship. It just wasn't that one. Um, but one thing that I've said about that team, since they have come into this era that they are in, is that they mimic the closest thing I've ever seen to a Dean Smith basketball team. And that's saying a lot because Roy Williams uses the Dean Smith philosophy. He is, I mean, Dean Smith was his mentor. That I mean, it was like a father to him. There is nobody that tries to mimic Dean Smith more than Roy Williams, but Roy has his own coaching style, and you see that in the way Roy coaches. But one thing that Villanova does, one thing that Dean Smith always did was he had a rule, and it doesn't matter how big the game was. It could be a, a preseason game, or it could be a, a game against a nobody, or it could be the national championship game. Under no circumstances was someone to take a shot on offense until every member of the offense had touched the ball at least one time. The only time that there was an exception to that rule is on a fast break or if there was 
there was someone under the basket with no one else in the paint. So that means no one else can be within arm's reach of them. Yes, then you can go down low because it's going to be an easy dunk, and it's a guaranteed two points, basically. But in any other circumstance, it doesn't matter if you've had three wide open shots until every member of that five-person team that is on the court has touched the ball at least once. No one's allowed to take a shot. And that right there made Dean Smith so dangerous because, especially when playing man-to-man defenses, which is what Texas specializes in. Now, some people may argue with me and go, well, Texas played zone against North Carolina. No, they actually did a mixture of both. They are starting to progress more into a zone defense when you are playing teams that also play zone defenses. Villanova plays man-to-man when they know they are the faster team. Texas is a fast team, but if you notice with North Carolina, North Carolina is a fast team, but North Carolina can slow it down to whatever pace they want to play at. Just like I said the other day on video, I expected North Carolina to lose that game, and it's because I just think that North Carolina is still a little bit young, and I think that they went out there and maybe just put a little bit too much into that Stanford game. But... In saying that, North Carolina showed throughout that second half who who the better team was on both sides of the ball. What you're going to see with Texas is as fast as they are, when they get really pressured and they are forced to change their tempo, whether go up or go down, Texas struggles. That's what North Carolina forced them to do. And Villanova is just as good at doing that. And the reason is... Everybody touches the ball. They are the best passing team in all of college basketball, and they have been outside of the year that outside of the two years that North Carolina was in the national championship, one year losing. They were the best, but since then, I would say the best passing, you know, the best passing team over the over the course of the last ten years, if you added everything up, would be Villanova. They play the best team basketball, some of the best team basketball I've ever seen. The year they won, or let's say 2000, and I guess it was the year Virginia won the national championship. Villanova got eliminated, you know, kind of early in my eyes, because I thought Villanova was the best team in the country. Still don't, to this day, don't believe that Virginia was the best team. I don't believe Virginia's ever been the best team. Um, I think their coach is a dimwit, but... That year, that may have been the best team basketball I've ever seen played, ever, by anyone. Villanova's going to wear Texas out doing that. So unless Villanova just has an off day offensively and they can't accumulate points, I think the wrong team is favored here. Right now, Texas is laying three points, three and a half in some spots. Truth be told, I've got Villanova minus two in everything that I break down. I think Villanova is the better team, just any way you want to cut it. I do think that momentum-wise, I think that Texas has a little bit more momentum, more momentum going into this game. I think Texas is a little more battle-tested. But the thing is, when you're going into such an obscure season, how much does that battle-testing really matter? We don't know yet. And when you talk about uh, you know, being battle tested, yes, that helps you, but it can also hurt you in the way that a team prepares for you because you've gone out there and you've played games against Indiana, a good basketball team. You've gone out there and played against a very good North Carolina basketball team. So to win those games, you had to play your best ball, especially the way, you know, with Indiana, they got lucky and put Indiana away early out of just sheer frustration on Indiana's side. With North Carolina, it was literally a buzzer beater. So for 40 full minutes, you had to lay everything on the line to beat that team. Don't think that Villanova hasn't studied the blueprint of that North Carolina game to know here's the keys to success against Texas. That, I think, wipes away what your battle-tested you know figures are. I think that goes completely out the window based on now you have a team that's even more prepared for you. So what I see in this game is where I think it's going to be the downfall to Texas. And there's one of two ways I think that this game pans out. 
Um, if we give the benefit of the doubt to Texas and Texas wins this game, I don't think the three points will mean much because I think they'll win by seven plus. And the way that's going to have to happen is it's going to have to be early separation, which allows there towards the end of the first half Texas to slow things down, not worry about a full court press, start regaining energy, playing some other people. That way they can go into halftime, come out in that second half, and be well, well rested and just have the stamina to go farther. And what will also have to happen is Villanova will be forced to shoot a lot of three-point shots, which usually that's not a problem because Villanova is such a strong three-point shooting team. But we have seen in the past where every so often Villanova really struggles from behind the arc. If that were to happen and there were to be some separation created in the first half, then yes, I see Texas very much capable of not only winning but walking away with the game. But on the more likely side of things, the way I see this game panning out is I see Texas trying to play a man-to-man -man defense because them playing a zone defense, they're not fast enough. They're much faster playing a man-to-man. -man. And in the first half, They'll be able to hang with Villanova all day long. They're going to force Villanova outside. It's going to be very difficult for them to get inside the paint, to get the easier shots, to get the layups, to get any type of fast breaks going. I think both teams are going to press. But what that's going to do is keep both teams in check. Let's put it that way. And I think that the man-to-man -man defense will work. But any team that plays a man-to-man -man defense – throughout a game, has to be fast and have a lot of stamina. I don't think Texas really has that. Not with a team that can play as fast and up-tempo as Villanova can play for an entire game. And keep in mind what I said at the beginning of the video, the Dean Smith rule. Everybody touches the ball. They will move that ball in and around the perimeter over and over. They'll go inside. They'll go outside. There are times in this game, mark my words, that you will see all five players touch the ball at least twice before a shot's taken, and they'll still have plenty of time left on the shot clock because they will move the ball so well and so quickly. And what happens when you're playing a man-to-man -man defense? You're going to see one guy going from the left to the right, from the inside to the outside, from the paint to the arc, from the arc back over to the corner. That wears a team ragged. I mean ragged. And when you talk about just pure stamina, who has more of it, Texas or Nova? Short stint, Texas. Full game, Villanova by a mile. So what I think happens is Villanova just wants to stay in the game let their three-point shooting be above average like it always is, and then come the last four or five minutes of this game, Texas is gassed, Villanova still has some gas in the tank, and they hold their foot to the floor for the rest of it, which not only allows them to get ahead in this game, but break out to a nice, comfortable lead, 9, 10, 11 points, where then they can back it off, just worry about defense and burning as much clock as possible, which will get them to the foul line for easy, uncontested points. And I don't think Texas will be able to come back from that. So here's two ways you can play this game. Obviously, three points in college basketball and, and two teams that just aren't very familiar with each other because it's the Big East and the Big 12. I, I would say taking the points is the smartest play. That's what I recommend. That is your free play. But if you're a money line guy, you want to make some nice plus profit, I'd also take the money line with Villanova because I just think they're the better team. So your official free premium play, what is on the card, is Villanova plus three. You may can get it at three and a half at your book. I see some of them out there like Babata has that. But if you are not wanting to take the points, you can take the money line. We are also going to sprinkle some of the money line. So that's two plays for you. But your official free play is going to be Villanova plus three over Texas in a game that I think they can and they should win outright. So that is your free play for Sunday. I hope you enjoyed it. We will see you back. Oh, and we did not record the video today. Uh, Jerry at his new office that they're setting up out in Arizona, they are getting everything. They actually had a lot of stuff delivered today. So he called me. He goes, hey, we're going to have to push this back a couple hours. I said, well, hey, instead of doing that and getting a late video out, we'll do a recap of football for this weekend, and we'll start breaking down next week's football and doing a lot of college basketball, which will allow us to give you even more free premium picks on that video we were doing. So once everything's done for Sunday, 
we get everything completed, he's still going to be at the office working. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll give him a call. We'll go live together on a Zoom call or something and get episode one done for you and make sure that it's up late tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night sometime. But it'll be um, a much more in-depth video for you guys, give you a lot more information, multiple sports, and give you more free plays. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. And then also he's going to be out with one of our clients in Vegas next weekend, laying some big, big money bets on some stuff that we've got coming up. We'll get some content out for you guys uh, with the Circus Sports book out there. So make sure you guys are tuning in because we are getting ready to flood your screens with content. I love you guys. I can't wait to see you again. Good luck to everybody on a big NFL card. It's already posted and up. All the clients have the plays and a nice, nice card. Very, you know, solid card of college basketball for Sunday. I love you guys. Good luck the rest of Saturday. Good luck on Sunday. See you back on Monday.